Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Francisco. Francisco is from Portugal, but he lives in Switzerland. So let's see what Francisco has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello. Hello, Francisco. How are you? I'm doing good, and you? Very well. Thanks so much for taking the time for the interview today. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Francisco, so how's your day been so far? Uh, I mean, today I had, I, it's Sunday, so I have day off today so I can rest. Um, next week we have a premiere. So it's been a little bit uh, chaotic days, um, trying to rehearse for the premiere next week. Um, also at the same time, trying to create new steps for me because for next season, I will be, when I say next season, it's from like, we go by August to July. So from August on, from next season, I'll be doing freelance as a professional dancer and also as a choreographer. So, yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your career as a ballet dancer and a choreographer. So um, I started I started uh, my dance career when, let's say, when I was free with my parents putting me, they wanted to put me, my brother, and my sister in extracurricular activities in the school. Um, and the school didn't have a lot of extracurricular activities, so they just had like swimming, ballet and jazz so my parents they decided to put the three of us in ballet in jazz also and then sometime later also in, in swimming and what happened was my brother and my sister started to give up on dancing and I was the only one since the age of three that I kept dancing then by the way the, the age of 12 I told my parents that I really wanted to be a professional dancer which they accepted very well. And from the age 15, I moved out from my small town called Coimbra in Portugal to Lisbon. And I studied three years in Lisbon in the National Conservatory of Lisbon. Then in my last year, I did, I did a lot of competitions and stuff. And in my last year, I did the the most renowned competition in dan in the dance world, which is uh, Clé de Lausanne in Switzerland. And I was one of the SME finalists for, for the competition. So I got a scholarship, two scholarships to study in two renowned schools. And I decided to come and study in Basel, Switzerland, in the Ballet Schul Theater Basel. Um, I studied here for one year, I kept doing auditions, and then I went, I got a contract as an apprentice in Ballet National de Marseille in France. Um, I spent almost three years in the company, um, first as an apprentice, then as a normal contract, and then I decided to leave the company and pursue something, go to another company and be happy. Um, also, that's where I met my boyfriend, which, funny enough, was five years yesterday, our anniversary. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> thank, you, thank you. And um, then I did audition to Ballet Theater Basel in Switzerland, which I knew because I studied here. And the director knew me, and then I got a contract. And it's been four years since then, and now I'm... Um, adventuring myself to a new adventure of freelancing as a professional, as a dancer, and as a, also as a choreographer, which choreography came a long way since I was a kid, but I never, I expressed myself through dance, but I never had the time to have, create stuff by myself. I always create stuff on me, but I never created on other people. So as I decided that I wanted to leave the company this season, I said that um yeah i wanted to start do choreography and it, it was always an inspiration of mine to do choreography so i created a duet um called through your eyes talking about um how a relationship works how like sometimes when you're down the other person takes over takes care of you or when the other person is not feeling okay that you take care of that person it's like a mutual relationship of not letting the other person go down and i also created another piece called tell me that 
was also talking about relationships, but different kinds of relationships throughout my life and throughout my day today. And yeah, now I'm starting to create more choreographies, um, waiting for some answers for some projects and stuff, and just trying not to stress so much and just trying to relax, enjoy, and yeah. That's it. Amazing. My goodness, what an uh, amazing, beautiful journey so far. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a very, a very rough one also, but of yeah. Course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I think when you do something with, with passion, with something, you know, with joy, you don't feel like working. It's hard, but you feel like you are having a time yeah. of your life. That's I mean, what I, 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 I always had supporting parents. So at one point, they always supported me doing what I love. Um, you know, uh, I, in my first year in Lisbon, uh, one week after my birthday, I lost my father. He passed, he had an accident Oh wow! Um, and he passed away. So, you know, for a young man as me, um, to come to terms that, um, be me living by myself in Lisbon without my family. And he was always the the one supporting me and my mom also but my father was always the one like taking care of us and like supporting us you know my mom also helped us a lot and supporting us and after his death was a lot of turmoil with me because uh i mean i come from a religious family very portuguese people you know but like we're not fanatics or anything but you know i have uh I won't say I have a difficult relationship with the religion, but also with me after coming out as gay to to my mom and to my, not to the entirety of my family, because some parts of my family, I, I don't talk so much, but you know, um, was, qu was quite hard, it was quite hard at the beginning. But after they accepted, they met my boyfriend, my boyfriend came with me. Um, to Portugal this last Christmas. He met my family for the first time, so it was quite nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, lo losing my father was very hard on me. Um, also in my second year, after one year after in Lisbon, I lost my grandfather from my mother's side, mm -hmm. uh, which was also very hard for me because it was two mainly male roles that disappeared from my entire life, especially also for my younger brother and my older sister. And then the, my last year, I came out as gay, um, which was really hard also uh, at the beginning for my mom to accept it. But now she's very happy and she she's accepted and stuff. Uh, and she's very supportive of, of my life. Um, she was the one that helped me the most after everything that happened. And I had a lot of support of friends, you know, and also mental health happened a lot with me um these past few years um i started to struggle a lot with depression and anxiety um i i don't have i'm not ashamed to say that i'm i have depression and anxiety i don't i'm not ashamed to say that uh, i have panic attacks i have anxiety attacks sometimes that i feel mood swings from up to down um I take antidepressives, um, you know, I do therapy, but it's things that now start to help me a lot. You know, my boyfriend also has been very supportive of me. He comes from Cameroon, from Africa, also from another country that's very secluded with LGBTQ plus uh, rights, you know, so it's hard also for him to show um, outside of the apartment to show a little bit, you know, he's doing it you know he's happy to be with me and i understand him but you know it's very hard you know to talk with his family about these kind of issues and i understand because it's not safe for him i'm not going to be the one being like you know you should talk you should say i'm your boyfriend no i, I respect his his point of view because there's a, a there's a lot of gay men especially from countries that they don't accept or families they don't accept their background that they don't feel safe. So for me, I'm not going to be the one pushing those people to be like, no, you should come out to your families. I didn't come out also to half of my family. And it it is my decision, you know, and I'm not making anyone take their decision away. If you're out with me, he's my boyfriend, he's my boyfriend. Um, 
I really don't care if you're out to everyone, if you're out to just a few people, if you're comfortable with yourself right now, that's the most important thing that you are. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it's been, it's been, it's been uh, some difficult years also. And last year I lost my grandmother from my mom's side. So it's been, you know, a roller coaster of, <laughs> I was about to say that, like a roller coaster up and down. Yeah, it's been, it's a, it's the roller coasters of like very, very strong things to happen. I'm not saying that I give up on stuff. I I arrived at moments that I was like, should I keep going? Should I not? But deep down and with the people surrounding me, I always had that thing to be like, you can do it. You can Absolutely. persevere until now. You you did it that you persevere. So why why you do you want to stop? So you know, I I have beautiful people surrounding me. Beautiful, uh, my beautiful boyfriend, beautiful partners, uh, beautiful friends. Um, so yeah. Also, I'm I'm a new journey of relationships. So yeah, that's it amazing francisco as i totally agree i understand talking about up and downs in family or in situations in our journey it's always uh, you feel safe you relieve thing you feel like okay i'm sharing my experience and uh, saying that we always help people out there as well maybe they're facing the same situation so yeah it's good to talk it's good it's not easy sometimes but it's good to put it out to, to share and i think people they appreciate that as well francisco before yeah. we started so yeah, so during the journey, I'm going to explore a bit of uh, different topics about your life, okay? For sure, let's do it. Are you ready to go on a beautiful journey for your memories in life and to share your point of views? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm all, I've am I'm always been a, now, I mean, I, you know, I'm still young. I don't like to say that I'm like young, I'm 25 and stuff. And there's people <laughs> that are like, oh yeah, I'm old and stuff. I'm like, you know, I'm still in my early ages of like discovering myself. So I'm now I'm very open book about sexuality, about sex, about um, non-monogamous relationships and stuff. I'm discovering new things. Mm -hmm. So I'm a very open person about talking about all these situations, about life, about everything. So and, I talk, and I talk a lot, so I'm sorry about it. <laughs> it's OK. You are in the right place. <laughs> So welcome to William and the Magic Box. So this is my best friend, okay? Wonderful questions. Yeah. I'm just gonna play a song now, just for us to relax a bit before the first question, okay? Let's. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Okay, Francisco, so just before we start the game, during the journey, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, always can change, okay? Okay, no problem. First question for you is, what does money mean to you? Damn, that's a, that's a, that's, a, wow. Okay, so money for me means, I mean, um, I mean, means to do a lot of things that I want to do like traveling, do my own thing, do my own, own works, do my own choreography, um, help people um, that I love and support. You know, I come from a family that we are middle middle ground, like not poor, not rich. Um, and money was always like a subject that we talked about, but wasn't something very concrete about it. And now with me being freelancing now, um, I'm going to get the unemployment from friends, but at the same time, I'm still thinking like, um, I need to save money. I need to take care of myself. I need to think about all other stuff. You know, I, you know, also I have like, you know, a relationship with my boyfriend, even though we don't talk about money with each other, which I think for some people are always like, oh, but you should always talk money with your couple in couples. I mean, we talk about it, but it's not a topic that I think should, um, I think it's a topic that sometimes brings a lot of arguments in a couple. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we've been good until now. So, I mean, five years. So, yeah. But I mean, for me, money is a way for using for traveling, for creating, um, to buy food, which I love food. So, um, <laughs> and also to spend on things that are really appreciated to me to support also, um, 
communities that need the money. So, you know, and to be supported. So, yeah. Great. Next question. Let's do it. Hey, Francisco from Portugal. Next question is, what are you most passionate about? Well, nowadays, um, that question is quite difficult nowadays, but I mean, I'm very passionate about art. Not uh, when I talk about art, like we talked, I'm a professional dancer, but I'm, I'm not just talking about dance. I'm very passionate about dance. Dance with, will always be my first love and everything. But now, as I start to see other perspectives of life, I start to realize that art is a subject that really helps me understand a lot of things in the way of creating, in the way of like light designing, in the way of creating music, um, in the way of uh, researching movements, in the way of also like just, you know, doing modeling or just like painting or just writing. It's something that I'm very passionate about. I And it just helps me um, release a lot of things that I've been holding on on myself, you know? So I think art is the one thing that I'm very passionate about right now. Creating art, seeing art and supporting artists all over the world, colleagues of mine, dancers of mine and choreographers. So, yeah. Amazing. I knew some, I knew the dancer would be connected with, with dance, with art, something like that, like somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next question, let's do it. Before the next question, as you're saying that uh, yesterday you just, uh, you are celebrating five years of your relationship. So yeah. far, what's the most beautiful lesson you've learned from your boyfriend? Uh, that I'm stubborn as well, uh, <laughs> but that's the Taurus in me. So, um, patience mm -hmm. and listening a lot because we have a, a age difference. So, you know, I'm 25, he's 36, 37. Mm -hmm. more or less. It's not that I don't know his age, it's just, you know, um, <laughs> Um, I'm sure yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, no, but we have age difference. So it's very different the way we see the world. But there's some point of view that I see from his perspective and he sees from my perspective that we actually quite understand. Like he doesn't come from the art world. I come from the art world. He doesn't understand dance. You know, I understand dance. He understands more like money wise and politics stuff. Me, I don't understand anything about that. Not saying that I'm not into politics, but you know, it's not the subject that I talk about because, you know, I literally don't know how to talk about politics and stuff, but I know how to talk about rights and everything. Um, but actually, for example, he works now on what we call here in France, EDS, which is the Association for HIV. And it's funny because sometimes like, learn a lot of things so you know we help each other understand a lot of things about life and i think the the lesson that i learned the most was patience and listening to listening to each other and try not to get on each other's nerves and that's it all right next question is which talent do you wish you had oh oh damn okay um which talent i wish i had that's a damn hard question because i already had a good i have a really good talent so um if i wasn't a dancer what would i be i don't know i wish um, I, that's a really hard question because i'm really really trying to figure out because i always all, dance has always been my my talent you know so I always thought about modeling and I want to do modeling and stuff, but mm -hmm. dance was always my talent. But I have to say, um, I'm very good at swimming. That could, be, that could be a good talent. I'm, I, I like very much to swim and to be in the ocean and just, you know, and I was actually supposed to be also a professional swimmer a one time ago. So if I wasn't a dancer, maybe I would be a swimmer. So yeah, maybe swimming. There we go. Next question. Let's do it. 
next question for you is, if you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would you go and why? I will go back again to New York City because I was there last summer and I enjoyed New York City and it opened my eyes to a lot of things and it helped me realize that I need to do my own damn thing with my life. So if in a heartbeat I could go to New York again, I would, which I'm going again this summer. But if I could go right now, I would go right now to New York. But at the same time, I want to travel more everywhere but new york i don't know it's a place that just captivated me mm -hmm. and it helped me understand a lot of things it's not that i want to live there but i would love to just you know, visit and work there and just create stuff there so, yeah. did you go for uh for holidays or just to yes to you know it was, it, i went on holidays it was when the the monkeypox situation happened so it was a lot of yeah, it was a lot of scares happening. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to enjoy myself in New York. And then monkeypox happened and I was like, damn, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. At least you're okay. Nothing happened. No, I'm, so hap good. I'm okay. I'm vaccinated. Everything is good. good. <laughs> Everything is good. Everything is good. <laughs> Next question. Hey. Next question for you is, describe yourself in one positive word and one negative word only. One positive word would be uh, energetic. Um, I'm very uplifting, always like going, 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 doing, doing, doing. My negative one would be I'm very stubborn in the sense of like, I'm very like, it needs to be like this, it needs to be like that, it needs to be perfect. Um, I try not to put perfection in my dictionary anymore, but I'm very stubborn for the way that I want stuff, especially with my choreography, with my dancing, with even with my life, even with my relationship. And I start to realize that my boyfriend is always like, why you're so stubborn, why you, you know? But I think it's a trait that us Taurus get that is really, tiring but you know yeah stubborn i would say stubborn <laughs> very funny there's something about taurus i um i have i, I lived in portugal before actually i, I lived uh -huh. five years in porto i've been to coimbra i visit okay. coimbra there. Uh -huh. i know that city well and um my best one of my best friends he's portuguese and he lives in holland and he stores as well okay. and i'll tell you something i have some few of taurus my first love was a girl she was taurus uh -huh. I felt, through my life, I fell in love with three people that I was deepest, like deep, like in love. Uh -huh. All of them, they were Taurus. Guess what? Guess what? Um, all of them, they became really, really good friends. Yeah. So when I met them, they were like, I was literally in love. Even my, my friend now, actually, is my first friend I've made since I've been in Europe. Um, I know him for a long 20 years. And, uh, a lot of them, I was so deep in love, like literally crazy about it. And when I realized that, oh my God, this is happening now with Taurus again, with Taurus again. So when I meet someone and they go like, I say, well, what's your star sign? They go Taurus. I go like, okay, let me, <laughs> let me not get involved too much because we meant to be friends somehow. <laughs> yeah, I understand you because I have a lot of friends and sometimes they're like, wow, you're very mature for your age. You're very... Uh, good and stuff and blah, blah blah and I'm always like I mean it's just the way I am and the way I was raised so you know Taurus, I think Taurus are a good sign so yeah. for sure ready for another one yeah for sure for sure for sure let's do it next question before the next one you're saying about Portugal tell me when you think about Coimbra what's the best memory that comes to your mind the best memory about my hometown, about Coimbra, is it's a small city, you know, so um, a lot of people know each other. But my mes best memory that I have on my hometown would be the car rides after uh, me or my brother or my sister would finish. Like, for example, my brother and my sister, they played rugby and me, I, I would be doing ballet. So I would finish at 10 a.m., 10 p.m. And also my brother and my sister, they will finish at 10 p.m. And my greatest memories are when my father would pick us up 
and he would bring sometimes like snacks and stuff and we would be like listening to the radio and it was like that radio with like slow jams from music from the 80s the 90s the 70s and you know i grew up a lot with those musics and we would just listen to that and you know just go home and we would be sleeping in the car my father would wake us up and we would go do our homework or go to bed and stuff you know so my greatest memories of my hometown are that are the car rides after a long day of just doing school and then going to ballet or going to rugby and yeah okay next question is what is the best gift have ever received and from whom the best gift i ever received from my boyfriend of course i have to say sorry i'm trying to charge my computer because i forgot to charge it um so my best gift was from my boyfriend and i have to say um was actually last christmas because he took two weeks off with me and it was the first time he met my family so i have to say i think that was the best gift i could have ever had because for have my boyfriend be with me and meeting my family and see my hometown i think that was the best experience that i ever had and that's the best gift that i ever received was being able to be with my boyfriend in my hometown so yeah beautiful i can see him now watch the interview and he's smiling yeah <laughs> let's see also <laughs> two questions left for you francisco let's do it bro oh. Next question is if you could go back in time in one moment or event in your life what it would be and why Oh okay that hit home so if i could go back in time my answer would be you know to say one last goodbye to my father oh. I think that would be I also I have to I mean would would say one last goodbye to my father and also go to the little Francisco and say to him I know you've been you getting bullied I know there's a lot of people that don't understand what you're doing and you feel like you want to give up and but you just keep going and you're so strong and I have to tell you the future that you have it's not going to be easy but it's a beautiful thing that you're going to have and i really appreciate everything that you have you're going to have so much wonderful people surrounding you so much love and respect for each other and yeah and the other one would be i mean you said one but i have two and the other one would be yeah saying one last goodbye to my dad um uh, while he was still alive and say to him you know Thank you for everything you have done for me. Thank you for all the lessons, all the love, all the respect, all the non-judgment and for um never giving up on me, for never looking at me and my brother and my sister and never seeing just free kids trying to decide what they wanted to do but seeing free talented human people um trying to do something for themselves in this world. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm trying not I'm getting a little bit emotional, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Beautiful Francisco. I I think when that, whatever he is right now, he's smiling just, you know, with those beautiful words that you just um said now. To the whole world. The whole world is listening to that now. <laughs> I always I always I always know that they are next to me even so for sure and everything. So, yeah. He is and he always will be. I've got goosebumps now saying that he'll be. <laughs> Last question, ready? Yeah, always ready. Last one. But before the last question, you know, through your career, tell me a moment that you go like, okay, that moment I would never forget. That moment would always have a special place in my heart. Um I have a few, but I think I want to say this. 
I think there's a lot of other moments that's going to happen that's going to be concretized, going to be amazing for me in the future. One of the most that I have was uh, last year. Yeah, it was last year. It was it was a tough year for me last year. It was I had a lot of mental breakdowns, a lot of mental health problems. Um but I push it through. But I have to say one of my proudest moments of my career was to perform one of the main roles in a big ballet production, not a classical production, but a, a reinvented modern contemporary version. And it was doing one of the main roles. So I have to say though, that is one of my proudest moments on stage. Um, to be, to people look at me and be like, yes. I mean, I have I have another one that is from this season that it was working with two amazing choreographers that treated me and my colleagues as human beings. Um, and to perform their piece that's called Mommy Look was one of the best experiences I ever had. The process, the creation with everything, they were the sweetest souls ever. And I think those two moments are the ones that grab me the most, so yeah. All right, last question for you is, what makes you most uncomfortable about yourself? Um, How open, not, not how open I am, but how, you know, uh, what makes me very uncomfortable about myself is that I'm very open about my life, you know? And sometimes people, take advantage of that and I feel very uncomfortable about the thing of like me trying to be honest and me trying to be open and people just look at me and they're like he's crazy or like he's all, always energetic he's always doing this he's always doing that um you know oh he's he's always talking about sex he's always talking about this I'm I'm not uncomfortable about talking about sex. Yes, I joke about sex. Yes, I talk about sex a lot, but I'm a very, now I'm a very sex positive person. I don't really care if people look at me and be like, oh, you're always talking about sex. You always, I'm like, that makes me uncomfortable because at one point I'm just, I just feel like a pariah or something that it should be a taboo, you know? And for me to be open with my sexuality and to be open, like wearing bright colors and everything, and to be trying to be surrounded with people that are okay with me talking about sex and just joking around and stuff. People sometimes take it as me just being like, he just wants to have sex and just wants to be this and like, yeah, I like to have sex. Yes, I like. Um, but it's it's a little bit what makes me uncomfortable is still the prejudice of not being able to be yourself as a sex positive person you know yes i talk a lot about sex but it's i think it's normal we should talk about sex as a normal thing not as a something as a pariah or something so yeah that's it very good the message is out there you're talking openly that's what matters yeah Right, Francis, it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like. Don't forget to share this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. One word for money. Uh, spend. One word for love. Grateful. Life. Joy. Sex. Naughty. Oh. <laughs> One word for family. Support. Politics. Messy. Religion. Messy. <laughs> <laughs> One word for fear. Embrace. Friendship. Care. Desire. Um, desire. Touch. 
Say again? Touch. Okay. Regret. Painful. One word for success. Happiness. One word for wish. Sorrow. Okay. Happiness, one word. Love. One word for Coimbra. Saudade. Oh, bonitinho. <laughs> One word for um, Portugal. So that. So that. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's funny because saudade is a very Portuguese word. There's no um, there is no translation. It. But a, close to me, it would be like missing something. Missing. Yeah, it, it's yes. like, because people are like, oh, but it means missing. I'm like, um. It's more like a feeling. It's, yeah, so it's, that so that it's like you miss your home, you miss yeah. your family, but it's such a rooted um, word, you know. It's something that it, you just like, you know, you miss. Not like it, just miss like a lot, a lot. It's like rooted in you. So yeah. absolutely. One word for ballet dancer. Tough. And the last one, our choreographer. One word inspiring amazing let's pretend i'm going to meet your partner for a coffee and i'm going to ask him define francisco in one positive word and one negative word what he would say i think in one positive word you would say i'm a hard worker mm -hmm. in a negative way he would say stubborn as <laughs> <laughs> five years for sure he knows what he's talking about for sure <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know we have our fights and i'm very stubborn and sometimes i don't listen but you know uh, sometimes i apologize he apologized to me so <laughs> after five years you start to learn some stuff so you know of course uh, we have she... like a, yeah we have a distance relationship he lives in Marseille. i live in san luis next to basel so we don't live together uh, but, uh, okay understand so, yeah understand Right, so let's play now Francisco in the magic box and you can ask me a question. Okay. okay, Francisco, you can ask me a question now. So, my question is, are you comfortable with polyamorous or non-monogamous relationships? What a question. Oh my God, I, I, I'm reaching soon 900 interviews on the show so far and nobody asking this question yet. And you put in these spots? And I love being this part. Okay, let's talk about that. Right, I it's so interesting about that. I love the question because uh, I've I all sex. You talk about sex so openly, and I was just kind of going through my you know my thinking about sex as well. It's interesting because uh, um, I'm originally from Brazil. I come from a very small town place. I lived in Portugal as well. I lived in Porto, and um, relationship for me always been something. Um, you know, it's been to work on it, like having, you know, a relationship always being something interesting, difficult at the same time as well, enjoyable and, you know, a journey. Mm -hmm. But there's something else. Since I started doing the show, polyamorous was a, a subject that I never talked about and I never kind of explored. I didn't know much about that. Actually, I never heard before. And I had so many guests here on the show that they, they are in a relationship, a polyamorous relationship. And they start talking about, they start explaining about, they start, you know, being so understanding and well explained that I am so open now about that. You have no idea, Francisco, because it's something that, I'm Scorpio, by the way, Scorpio, you are, you are very, you know, like, can be a bit, um, you know, yeah. jealous, this and that. Anyway, so I, uh, since I've, you know, since I've been doing the show right now, it's something that... I never kind of picture myself on it, but I'm very open about it right now because the way we, I think the world right now is so open. People, they, you know, there are so many ways of for you to be happy, to be, you know, in a relationship. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter how many people are involved. It doesn't matter how open uh, the relationship is. Mm -hmm. But I strongly believe now that uh, it's something for me that so many people have been talking about through the show for me that they open my mind so much that for me, it's something that's not a taboo anymore. It's something interesting because I understand gay 
couples, in, I mean, straight couples as well, but gay couples, you know, we have this tendency of, it's a, it's a male thing about sex, about, you know, and at the same time as well, um, for you, when you have a long relationship, one point, you know, let's be honest, you know, the sex is going to be less and less, which is normal. Mm -hmm. So that's where, that's where I think, you know, um, both sides need to sit down, talk, you know, find a way to deal with the situation. And um, if polyamory is or open relationship, it's something that both agree, both going to be happy, why not? I think nowadays everything is about communication, everything is about uh, being happy and open and, you know, be honest about it. Why not? So I think everything, I think everything nowadays is just, you just need to talk about, you know, yeah. be honest, be open and face it, the reality and see how it comes. You know, it could be a good thing. It, it can save the relationship. You can be happy for, you know, for having a polyamorous open relationship. It's all about communication and both sides need to be happy. So that's my understanding. I think that's that I, I have to say that's also my point of view. Communication is very important in a relationship because without com communication and also, you know, honesty, I don't think a relationship works. But communication is always the key. Absolutely. You know, that's it. Did you like the interview, Francis? Yes, I loved it very much. I think it's a beautiful thing that you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I would love to meet you one day. Yeah, if I ever come to London. Yeah. And I just want to say, like, thank you very much for letting me be this open and honest with everyone. And yeah, I hope I can meet you and maybe take you on a date. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, look, uh, look, I'm getting blushed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, with time and space, we will see. Um, <laughs> But no, really, thank you very much. And I think it's very important to talk about with different types of life with people and um, and different aspects of being gay. Um, and not just being gay, also being part of the LGBTQ plus mm -hmm. community. Because we're always talking about gays, but we're never talking about lesbians or trans people or queer people asexual people intersexual people we're never talking about them because at one point it's always gay 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 and it's not about like the g doesn't come first it's the l that comes then the g then the t and you know trans people open doors for us it wasn't us, you know so i think it's important that we also talk about that that we absolutely, absolutely. About, i had, I had know, so many yeah, yeah i had so many people here like from different uh, you know different uh people from the community and I think everyone expressing themselves. Muito obrigado. It was Muito a pleasure. Obrigado. It was a really a pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. The pleasure and so much. Yeah. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much and keep in touch. It was a keep pleasure. Thank you. Kiss Take it. care. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, ciao. So did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.